I'm Kristen Cade, I'm a licensed cosmetologist, and today I'm going to share with you some infection control guidelines for makeup artists. It's our professional and legal obligation to keep our clients from harm by using proper infection control procedures. Unfortunately, there's just been so much false and wrong information shared throughout our industry, so it's really hard to tell what that actually is and what that means. So I've teamed up with Barbicide to clear up some common and maybe not so common misconceptions backed by science and medical professionals. By nature of our job, it's impossible to be 100% free of risk. I mean, we use our hands, our number one tool, to touch not only everything in our makeup kit, but it also touches the most contagious parts of another human, like the eyes, skin, mouth, and nose. So instead of just telling you what to do, I want to share with you how I came up with my process. That way you can use the same critical thinking skills to audit your own kit. Our number one goal is not to decontaminate our makeup. It's to avoid contaminating it in the first place. That's because we can't actually disinfect our makeup. I know we've all heard it different, but I will get to exactly why. First, if you want to know why, we must know what it means to clean and disinfect. Cleaning removes dirt, germs, and impurities from a surface. So it's using something like soap and water detergent and a mechanical action to like physically remove the germs from the surface. Disinfecting, on the other hand, actually will kill the germs. When I'm speaking about germs, I'm talking about bacteria, viruses, fungi, but I'm not including bacterial spores. A disinfectant is an EPA registered chemical that we will use on a surface after cleaning and drying something. It cannot work unless the item or surface has already been cleaned. A disinfectant alone does not clean an item and cleaning doesn't disinfect. So it's really important to not mix up the two. So we have cleaning, disinfecting, and then we have sterilization. Sterilization is killing all signs of microbial life. That means bacterial spores as well. That is typically used in a healthcare setting using something like an autoclave. Some states do require that estheticians use an autoclave for certain tools, but for most of us, we won't have access to one or know correctly how to use it, so it wouldn't be helpful for us anyways. So why can't we disinfect the makeup itself? We can't disinfect makeup because we can only disinfect non-porous inanimate objects. Something that's porous means it has the ability to absorb liquid. Therefore, all of our makeup is porous and cannot be disinfected. So what does that mean for our kit? First of all, let's always be mindful of the different types of ways that infectious diseases can spread. It can be airborne, it can spread through droplets, or it can spread through contact. Now, if something is airborne, there's not a whole lot that we can do because our stuff is just gonna be sitting out anyways. So we should be aware of it and always try to minimize our risk but the ways that we can really minimize our risks are by trying to avoid droplet and direct contact cross-contamination. So the items that I want to remove are my porous, reusable items. So that would be things like my kit bag, my director's chair, any makeup brush canisters, anything that is porous, that means it's soft, there's fabric, um, or it's just hard to clean. Remember, if we cannot clean it, we cannot disinfect it. So that's also going to be other items that are non-porous like my pencil sharpeners. I can never actually get inside to like fully clean out in there so just dropping it in a disinfectant does not do the job. How am I going to repackage? I know I just told you to get rid of a lot of stuff without giving you solutions but I promise I have them. So I'm going to repackage myself in a way that has a lower risk of cross-contamination and also has the ability to be easily cleaned and disinfected. So I want to make sure I go through all of my containers for example, anything with a lot of texture, a lot of crevices like this one. Now this is a prescription one that I use at home, so I'm not gonna repackage it, but a lot of skincare comes in something like this, or if it just has a lot of grooves in general. Sometimes really cute packaging can be like that, but it's not practical for our setting. So I will repackage it in something like this, a container which is really smooth, there aren't any grooves on it, I could easily wipe it down, and then I can easily disinfect the outside of it. I have any traveling makeup artists, which I think most of us are, at least we work on location. We have found this bag and it has become a lifesaver for us. Unfortunately, it is not very hygienic. So sadly, I'm going to keep using it at home. I'm not going to completely get rid of it, but I'm never going to bring it on set with me again. I'm not going to bring it on location. That's because this whole thing is porous. The only part that isn't porous is this lining here. Um, 
but because the whole packaging is porous, all of these inserts, I'm gonna, like, I can't ever actually clean in there. So I can't disinfect it either. This here is a plastic bin that I found. I found these ones at Walgreens are nice because they have like the separate top compartment, but you can use whatever, you know, works for you. The things I'm looking for is if something has a lot of texture, a lot of grooves. Now this one does here, but they're not like super deep or complicated. So it still will be really easy to clean and wipe down for me. Remember you want to clean it so you can disinfect it. If you can't get into really tiny areas, those are going to be areas that you can't ever clean, so you can't ever disinfect. Here I did find earlier, I have to go through these better. Here is an example of the adhesive coming off. I can put this bottle back in my kit, but I want to make sure I remove this adhesive. I remove all the extra adhesive that's stuck to it. I thoroughly clean and disinfect the outside, and then it can all be into my disinfected case. I'm going to redo all of this after I stop touching it all. That's another point too. Make sure you're doing this in an environment that's clean in the first place and make sure you're really washing your hands because it kind of defeats the purpose if you don't. I hope all of us have always been using some disposable applicators, but I just got this kit. This one is from, this is from Cosmetics. This brand here, which they also have a lot of jars and they have some really amazing disposable applicators. So if you don't, if you cannot afford one brush set per person, you need to use disposables. They also have sets like these, which I haven't opened up, but they look like really good quality. These are like $4 each. So I always stock up on extra brushes when I find a good deal, even if they're not like the most amazing, because I do have 10 brush sets. Um, they're not all my favorite brushes, obviously, I'm not rich, but um, I do have 10 brush sets and I can work with anything. So. If I need to, if I drop something on the floor, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna pick it up until I'm completely done with that client, then I'll wash my hands and do all that. But having backup brushes too is also a really good idea. So I have these that are amazing disposables. They're bamboo, so if you're more eco-friendly, hopefully we all are, but some things we just can't reuse. I know it hurts my soul a little bit to do that and to use more plastic and things, but if you're in the hospital and the doctor is reusing gloves because they're like, oh, the last person was like kind of fine. So like, it's okay. Like the last person just had a migraine. So these are fine, right? Like we can't think like that, okay? We have to assume that every single person has every single disease that we don't know about and we're gonna spread it on to your clients, whoever. Get in that mindset so that you can control your environment as much as possible. I know that's harsh, but you know, it only takes one mistake to ruin your career, which is so unfortunate, but like someone could go blind, someone could get a flesh eating disease. I don't mean to get morbid on you, but these are like real risks that we face every day. And despite the coronavirus, this, I am honestly grateful or Barbicide for working with me on this because this has been a long time coming. There's just way too much false information out there and we're finally clearing it up. I do love this case and packaging, but the problem is for my disposables, which are going into all of my makeup, which I cannot disinfect my makeup, I need to be really careful what touches it, right? So if someone has droplets, a disease that spreads by droplets and I am touching their face, I now have those on my hand. Now those germs, let's say, fall from my hand while I'm reaching for this. So they just went over this one, this one, this one, this one, and then ended up here. Okay, so potentially I could contaminate this whole kit even without touching it. So I am definitely gonna use this for like bobby pins and other things that aren't like directly, you know, going into my makeup. It's a good case and a good kit, but I've switched them over to spice jars. So the nice thing about the spice jars is I bought like 20 pack on Amazon. I got the bigger ones just so it could fit these, but they do, you know, you could get smaller ones. Now here I just came out and a couple of them come out, right? So I can just grab them when I want without touching anything else in here. I'm also putting them with the, the applicator tip down. That way I'm not cross contaminating everything. If a, if a lot do fall out, and then you're working quickly, you might spill a bunch those will still be clean at the bottom there. 
Now you did get these jars at the dollar store. I thought these would be really good for the smaller applicators I was talking about, but the problem is it's just a twist on the top here, so you can't ever actually clean out anything um, because there's like two layers. So unless I like were to completely take apart the two parts and then clean it and then disinfect it, which is either gonna break this or break my nail. So I'm not gonna do that. And sadly, just gonna avoid these. Um, but that's how I want you to look for kind of like the packaging and containers you are using. This is another good example I'm gonna be using for my larger spatulas, um, like the craft kits you can buy also the dollar store, like a hundred of them. Um, and those are really nice spatulas to be removing stuff. And just open it up, pour them out, makes it easy. When you're using mascara wands, you absolutely need to use mascara wands if you're using mascara. I know a lot of people use fan brushes and if you use one fan brush per eye, then that's fine. But you need to use a separate applicator on each eye and each time you dip it, it needs to be a different applicator. So left eye, that's her, that's her right eye, I'm lying, her right eye. So I will use this. Let's say I need more mascara. I'm gonna throw this one out, grab a new applicator, do my second coat on the right eye, throw that out into my red bin, and then I can move to the left eye doing the same thing. So each eye, each person will use at least two disposable mascara ones. And anytime you need another coat, you'll use more. Otherwise, if you're using something from this eye to that eye, if they do have pink eye or something that you can't really see yet, um, that could spread, you know, that's very contagious and that can spread easily from both of their eyes. Especially if they don't know it yet, the last thing you want is them blaming you for something that they already had, but it is our fault if we do spread it to the other eye. So be careful of that. A lot of people use a metal spatula and palette. If you have enough of those, like one per person, I don't see the problem with that. I wouldn't want to reuse a spatula in different items while I'm working because of the risk of cross-contamination. And also my palette, I'm not sure that I could actually clean that off completely. Disinfectants, you have to follow their guidelines. So if it says wait 10 minutes, you need to wait that 10 minutes. That's not an option. So I just don't see it being easy for me to clean and disinfect it and wait the 10 minutes before my next person. And then something like that, you'd also have to really wash off so that there, there isn't any remaining disinfectant because you're putting the makeup on it. So I'm just going to use these. I found them at the dollar store with like a pack of six. And these, if I need to toss one, that's okay. But otherwise I could take it home. I can really clean and try to disinfect as much as I can. And I don't have to worry about potentially having stuff left behind when I have my next person. Something I've always done and I will continue to do is everyone has a separate brush set, but how you store them makes a difference too. So I bought the wrong bags and we're in quarantine, so I didn't bother to repurchase them. But I, I'll usually use a smaller plastic bag and I will set this up. If I know I'm working with 10 models, I will make sure I have 10 brush sets in individual bags. Now, I don't know them yet, so once I get there, I say, hi, I'm Kristen, I'm gonna be doing your makeup today, what's your name, and do you have any allergies? So I will write that all in the bag. Um, not every bag has labels like this one does, so I will bring my own labels and I'll stick that on. Now, what is that gonna do? That's gonna help me to make sure I don't accidentally pick up, I don't care how careful you are when you're working backstage somewhere where it's like chaotic and you're running from her to her to her, him, whoever, it's so hard to avoid this stuff. So planning ahead really makes a big difference. So now that I have this brush set, I'm gonna say, hey, you're gonna hold on to this for me. That way I don't mix it up. And when I need it, you're just gonna hand it to me. So don't lose them. We gotta work together. Now, if you're really getting technical about cross-contamination, technically her holding them and doing whatever, eating, walking away, calling her boyfriend, whatever it is that happens backstage, 
I guess that puts that bag at risk and then I'm touching the bag and bouncing around from people. So technically you could double bag it. She's only gonna touch the outside bag and when I say I need your brushes, what, what are you gonna do? You're gonna have her open up the outside bag. Now I'll reach in and grab the inside bag. So I'm the one who has touched this and she's the only one who's touched the outside. Okay, so now we're gonna start working with my model or client. I've heard, already asked her her name if she has any allergies. I have her separate makeup bag. I might honestly start putting the palettes in there and whatever I can ahead of time. Like I said, we'll kind of evolve and see how that works in an actual working environment. But what I am gonna do before I touch her, because my hands, I just thoroughly wash my hands, clean them. I always prefer actually washing over using hand sanitizer if you don't have the option and try to make the option. Also, I don't have artificial nails and any like jewelry and stuff that could easily trap germs on your hands and easily spread it to the next person. So I have her brush bag. I asked her that. Now I'm going to decide what I need for makeup. I'm going to try to go into my kit while my hands are clean and take out as much as I think I might need. I also use a lot of really small jars for my foundations and I can just refill these. That way if instead of mixing on the palette sometimes it's easier to just mix in a jar and then if you are going to be following that client throughout the day or on set or kind of whatever area you work you can just throw this, this is now their custom shade, into their bag and you're not remixing every time. So I'm going to take out everything I think I might need for her ahead of time. Now sometimes you will have to go back into your kit. That's inevitable. But I'm going to try to minimize that as much as I can. Okay, so I take everything out. Let's just say I need those. I'm going to close this, put it away. I'm going to consider everything in here still clean because right now my hands are clean. Unless something was airborne, which we're all at a risk no matter no matter what as soon as this is open. Okay, so I have this palette which I'm considering clean. Again, unless if something is airborne, which there's always a potential, but it's a potential no matter what I open. So if you apply, you, know, you can apply your stuff directly to your palette. This can just squeeze out. A lot of the creams are really nice because you can just squeeze them out. You're not using more applicators. But for things in a jar, foundations like this, lipsticks, I am going to dip in and actually take them out with my applicator. So if I'm going to use this. Also, when you're opening things, you know, I just caught myself doing it the wrong way. Um, and it's going to be hard to change our habits, some of them, but as we're mindful, we'll start evolving. So I'm going to try not to like really put my hands all over everything either and just be a little bit more delicate with how I open things, especially around the crevices of the lids, because how often are we actually coming in here and really cleaning the outside of this part? I think it's much harder to do, but it's really easy to wipe down in here. So try not to touch even those like inside areas. And I'm going to take my spatula. Also, I have turned away, pretending, I have turned away from my client. My, let's say my table's right in front of me. I'm going to block this so it's like one extra level. I do something called a sneeze check. At all times, anything that I have out, if someone sneezes, I either want to be able to throw it away or disinfect it. And I want to throw it away without crying. I don't want to throw away my whole makeup kit. But if someone sneezes and I worked like how I used to work when I first started because it's so excited. You can see all my eyeshadows and everything like that. Well, that's, that's a problem, right? So you don't want to be sitting here with everything wide open. You don't want to be taking your brush and going right here, having your palette close to the person at all. You're just going to keep as much clothes. Anything that is going to be open will be on my palette. Everything else closed and as much out of the way as possible. Okay, so you can apply this to the palette. I'm not going to reuse this part, but since my hands are clean, I can use the other end as long as I didn't just put this down. If I put this down, just throw it away, start over, grab a new one. Otherwise, I can reuse this one. It's long enough. If you had like a really short one, I wouldn't even bother reusing that. So now what I'm going to do, remember I said I'm going to put all my dirty spatulas, applicators, anything into 
my red bin and pretend I just put a lid on it, okay? Now, I, let's just say I just filled, you know, most of these, and now I'm gonna start working on her. Where did I put her brush? She just handed me her brush set again. I, she, what is she sitting on? I told you to get rid of your director's chair or makeup chair. I'm probably just gonna use a folding chair that's either plastic or metal, so it's easy to clean. And I'll try to disinfect as much as I can while I'm working. I really do not want any chair that has armrests because unless you're working with just one person, but I rarely just work with one person all day. So if she's sitting there with her arms and then my next client sits there and puts her hands here, it's not really gonna be more of a risk to me because I'm not touching that part, but it will be to all of my clients throughout the day because they're sharing germs in front of me right here. Um, so now, see, I just put this on her Right now, why is this not clean? Even though these should have used a darker thing, but even though these four are completely white and they were clean before I started working on her, same reason for the droplets. I just touched this and now I'm going over here. So all of this is potentially contaminated. Anything around me now is potentially contaminated. So even something like this, which would be easy if it's clean, to just directly apply to the palette here. I'm not gonna ever use this wand and I will start using more disposable applicators for things like that. Like I said, if you put it ahead of time while it's still clean, I think that's probably debatable as far as how clean that is, but definitely be mindful once you start working on it. It's, this is dirty, it's contaminated. Now I put this, this, and let's say this, I just put these on my palette. I don't think I need them anymore. So I'm gonna put them in my green bin. This bin here is stuff that I have touched already. So it's considered contaminated. The packaging is considered contaminated, but because I've been thoughtful of makeup, the makeup itself is not contaminated. And that way, if she sneezes, what do we have in front of me? Just the stuff that I think I still need and the palette. Now I've heard the argument with a lot of us use like our lipsticks in a palette, something like this. I've heard the argument that some people are going to go back to single use items instead. I completely understand like the logic behind that. For me and the way I work, I think this is still going to be safer. And let's talk about palettes in general. I don't want to get rid of all palettes, but some of them I definitely will. Eyeshadow, for example. There's this big myth that eyeshadow is, you know, or powders in general can be just wiped down and sprayed with alcohol and that kills everything because bacteria doesn't really hang out on, on powders. I don't know who came up with that and spread that. It was very easy to believe, but it's not true. And unfortunately, that would make our lives so much easier. Even if that was true, it's gonna be irrelevant with the way that we work because, as I said, we wanna look for not complicated packaging that we can easily clean and disinfect because this is whole, all an area for cross-contamination as well because we're always using our hands, right? So even if you could completely clean all of this, this packaging is easy, it's not porous versus something like this, which is porous. You can never disinfect this. But this, I couldn't even clean certain areas because even though the outside is simple packaging, the grooves around each eyeshadow could hold plenty of germs in there and I can't ever get in there to clean. So therefore I can't disinfect it. And that's just gonna hang out right next to my eyeshadows. So that's not gonna be hygienic. So if you're not gonna take as extreme measures as I am, you still need to be scraping your eyeshadow out of your palette every time. We should, we should have always been doing this. So I'm going to take my spatula anytime you're doing it and scrape it out before you use it. Now it's not that hard. Um, I think it's going to be messier for me to work like this way on set. So I will not. What I am going to do instead is I have bought a bunch of jars. Cosmetics is another place. Amazon has a lot of different jars. 
Um, the dollar store has different jars, so you can find what works for you. A couple different kinds. Probably use the smaller ones, but this is the first one that I did. And I have just scraped out all of my eyeshadow and put it into jars like this. Now this one I reset with alcohol, so it is a pressed powder again. That way it's more hygienic to come from something like this versus the whole palette where you can't really clean. Now what you can also do is, like this color, I could split up into five different jars, let's say. So that does make it easier to make more custom single-use shadows. So which palettes am I going to keep? Most of my cream-based palettes, because they don't have that same gap issue, I'm going to keep that. Like these don't have any extra space. It has a big space right here, which will be easy for me to clean, but it doesn't have any little spaces that are really hard to get to. So these I think are fine. It's simple packaging. It's not porous. Um, same thing with here. The only part that is going to be hard is like the screws on the back here, but I never, I'm never like hanging out with, with this like this. So it's not going to be an issue for me either. It's not a high touch area, um, versus like the front. If that was really complicated, then then that would make it harder for me to want to use something like this. But why do I want to use this opposed to, I know I just told you I'm going to make more single-use eyeshadows. So why do I want to use single-use eyeshadows but not single-use lipsticks? Well, the less that we touch, the better. I just don't see another way to like fully be hygienic in an eyeshadow palette because of those gaps. With this, I do. So this is going to be a lower risk for me for eyeshadows. Now this is going to be a lower risk for me with lipsticks or cream based things because it's one thing that I'm touching versus, you know, ruffling through, let's say I need, okay, so let's say I have already touched her. I now have her germs all over my hands. I'm now going to go back into my kit, my original kit, because I need, I need a red lipstick. So what am I going to do? I'm going to bring this through. I'm going to dig, touch all these items again, just to find that one lipstick. And then those are all technically contaminated. The packaging is contaminated, not the makeup, so I can clean and disinfect, but that's an extra job for me. I know if this is said everywhere, please do not blow on your items. If you are using a powder, I would still be using, um, you know, a setting powder or something. I'm not completely eliminating powders, but if you do that, for one, like don't blow on it, but I'm also probably gonna try to, in a not specifically my green case, but in a more closed area, try to hit the excess powder off instead of just, you know, hitting off the side of something where that could go anywhere. Um, so I'll try to keep that a little bit more contained. Same thing with eyelashes and adhesive. Don't, definitely don't blow on it, but I probably won't just kind of wave it in the air I'll just wait a little bit longer till it gets tacky. And we'll also have to figure out the groove of things. Like when I do hair and makeup, I can control these things, right? But if I'm just doing the makeup and I'm working with a hairstylist and they have a blow dryer going, that's gonna change things. I realize not all of this stuff is going to work in every single situation, but this is how we need to start thinking about things. I know some people have mentioned using the airbrush gun um, more frequently because they think that might be more hygienic. I understand where you're coming from with that. The problem is, unless, I don't know how every airbrush works, I only use this one. So this one has the pods that can come off and the actual like nozzle is attached to the pod. So if you use a single one of these per person or separate ones for each person, I think that would be completely fine. But the problem is, if you're reusing this pod, or any pod, from one person to the next, without doing a full deep disinfection of it, I think that could be a problem. Because this nozzle is so close to their airways, so I know it's blowing out at them, but there's still going to be some of their germs getting back into this. And then that's not a problem for them, but then the next person who uses this, if I don't really disinfect it, it's literally blowing that right at them. So as long as you're using it that way, I think it's fine. I don't know that it's necessarily more hygienic. Um, maybe a little bit for you because you can stand a little bit further back, but unless you're doing a full face that way, you're going to be getting close to the person anyways. 
I am though going to ask my lovely friend, model, client, actor, whoever it is, to apply their own moisturizer or skincare. I personally just find it better to like have it hand applied over using brushes, but if you want to use brushes, that's fine too. Um, if you work in bridal or something where it's more of like a luxury experience, they might want that experience of you kind of rubbing it in. In that case, you know, that's fine. Maybe this is something I will switch back to doing shortly, I'm not sure. But I just figured it's the one time while we're doing makeup, I think, once I get back to doing makeup, maybe I'll correct myself, but it's the one time where you're like fully in there in like all the little crevices around their nose, their mouth, eyes, everything. So I just feel like that's an extra spot that we don't necessarily have to put our hands at risk for um, if we don't have to. So if your client's okay with it, I would just put, don't let them touch your stuff, but just squeeze out, you know, whatever moisturizer or skincare onto their hand and just ask them to apply it first. So I just finished my first client and I have 10 more coming up behind me. What does that mean? Hopefully that means I have a lot of assistance, but most of the time we don't. So that means I've already talked to them and I said, I need more time because you need to respect me more because we have to do this stuff. All jokes aside, kind of jokes, but need to re-clean and disinfect my surfaces. So I told you I have been using my green bin. That's the stuff I'm going to be reusing. My green bin, this is all the stuff I've touched. To be honest, it's probably a lot more things, right? Touch, touch, touch. So we touched all this stuff. What am I gonna do with it? So I'm gonna quickly try to wipe everything down and then spray it with isopropyl alcohol at 70%. Anything higher than that, which I, I mentioned I did use with my eyeshadows, uh, like 91%. That wasn't to disinfect, that was just to reset my eyeshadows. Anything higher is gonna dry too quickly so that it's not really gonna kill many germs. So you've sprayed it down with your alcohol. Make sure you're really saturating each item anytime you're disinfecting something. Whereas cleaning, you're gonna want to, you know, really use the cleaning motion and then dry it before you add a disinfectant. That's because if this takes a certain amount of water and then you already have water or soap or something else still on the table that's interacting with your disinfectant okay so clean dry and then you apply this so for some of them with like a 10 minute contact time if i'm using this on a surface i need to really get it wet for it to stay on the surface for 10 minutes right anything left over after the 10 minutes i can dry myself same thing with alcohol um, a lot of the stuff, because I don't want it to get into my makeup, I'm not going to fully submerge it, so I don't think that would technically qualify as a disinfectant, but it will lower my risk while I'm working of passing things on from person to person. What other disinfectants am I using? I'm using Barbicide as my working disinfectant to be using on my tables, my chairs, um, my outside surfaces, you know, things like my bins. I want to be careful about which disinfectant I use, especially in our environment, because we touch people's skin so frequently. We need to make sure that what we're using, one, doesn't corrode our own items, um, but it also, you want to think about if it were to spill, if it were to get on everything, how is it going to affect my stuff? So bleach is a really common disinfectant. You might use it in your house a lot, but I won't use it around my makeup kit because for one, it is corrosive around a lot of like the things that I'm going to be using, but it's also pretty harmful if it does get on the skin. So I just want to keep that away from my makeup. Um, another thing with bleach is it can cause a chemical reaction with things like alcohol and other disinfectants. So I don't want to be part of a chemical reaction scene, okay? Like we might work on movies, but we'll leave that up to the stunt people and we're gonna just put on fake burns. We're not gonna cause real ones, okay? Also, just because there is the strongest disinfectants out there doesn't mean that we need to be using them. Some of them contain formaldehyde or ingredients that are useful in certain situations, but they're not useful for us. So don't think about like what's stronger, it's gonna work quicker, like that's not how it works. They have done all the research that they need to do to, to remain effective and we just need to follow those guidelines. If it could work quicker, they would be on that. Like, it would be done already. So don't leave it up to us to make those decisions. I'm gonna demonstrate how to use these products while we're working. Now remember, we must clean and disinfect our working area before our next client.
So what does it actually mean? So I fully cleaned this area. I have dried it. I've removed everything from it to redo it. And now I would be using my barbicide. Now, if you cannot get the barbicide spray bottle, they do sell a spray bottle with little bullets that you can just fill into um, the bottle that it comes with. Now, if you can order that, or if you just want to buy the concentrate in a larger bottle, you can make your own. Now, you can go to the website and print off the label yourself, which is what I did here. And it looks like this. And you just print it off, cut it, and then attach it to your own spray bottle. Now, make sure the spray bottle is the right size because we do need 32 ounces. And then we are going to be mixing two ounces of the concentrate into this bottle. I want to show you how to do that. I do not want to be using my kitchen measuring cup to be putting chemicals in. So I am going to be using something like this. This has the ounces on it, or you can use other things. Now, if you're at home and trying to prepare and you do not have any of these handy or you don't have access to ordering it, I can show you another method too that I use to figure out what two ounces is in another container. Now, it is safest to use gloves when you're mixing any chemicals. So I am going to put my gloves on. I will not be using these gloves while I'm working with my client. You definitely don't want to use any gloves that have been used with disinfectants on a person. The best thing you can do with that is to just keep washing your hands in between people um, and make sure you do a thorough job at that. Okay, so I have my gloves on. I am now going to mix my barbicide concentrate. It would be best to be precise and use the two ounces, you know, that you have on an actual measuring cup. I did find this bottle here, and this one has, um, this one is not two ounces. It's one that I had at home, and it was completely clean. So I, first I filled it completely with water, and then I poured that water, I poured that water into my measuring cup. And the first time we did it, this is actually a three ounce bottle. So then I just measured what two ounces is, and then I'm gonna pour it back into here. Now I'm doing this all with water and I am going to lay this on the surface so you can actually get a, lot, a flat line of where that is and then you can use a marker or tape or something to outline where that two ounces is and you want to get eye level while you're looking at it because it can look different when you're at a different level. So make sure you're eye level with the line and then you can trace it to find out what two ounces is. That way you're not using your kitchen measuring cup. So, you know, once you have that, you just pour your water out. You have your line here now and you know what two ounces is and you can use your disinfectant. Now I'm going to show you that with my actual measuring cup though. And I just opened this box of gloves, they're way too big on me. I would suggest using gloves that actually fit you. Okay, so in here I poured two ounces of barbicide and I got to eye level to make sure that it was actually two ounces. And now I'm going to add it to my bottle. You always wanna add your water first and make sure you're using cooler water, add it first and be delicate when you're pouring so that you don't create a splashback and get that in your face. So I'm just going to slowly pour this into my bottle. I thoroughly clean this out before I use it for anything else. And okay, so now I have my barbicide spray bottle. And I'll show you when you're using it on a surface from a spray bottle, it's really important to make sure that you get thorough saturation. You don't want to just mist like this because if you can see these spots here, they're like kind of wet, but it has to sit for 10 minutes. So that's going to be dry pretty quickly. If it dries before the 10 minutes, it didn't do its job. So make sure you really saturate it. So you want to let this sit for 10 minutes on your surfaces and then you can wipe it down and use your surfaces again after the 10 minutes is complete. Now I'm not going to have two people sit here at the same time. I'm going to tell them I only have one, one person at a time to come back here wherever I am 
And I'm also going to set up in a place that doesn't have a ton of airflow. Now we don't want to be in like a closet, which we've probably all worked in that too. We want some airflow. We want to be able to breathe. We're going to be working in masks for, for at least a while. We don't want, you know, a fan right above us. We don't want to be right next to the window where things can be blowing a little bit more. So try to set up in an area where there is like airflow in the room, but not on your direct working space. I know this is a complex issue and trust me, it's kind of hard to put this all into a simple video. And I have been dreaming about, I've been dreaming about disposables after trying to find all this research and doing everything. So I hope you take this seriously and start implementing it into your actual makeup kit. I know I feel so much more empowered now that I've really analyzed my kit and I broke down how things actually spread while I'm working. And I hope you come out of this feeling exactly the same way. So where I found this information was from the CDC website. You can also look up any disinfectant that you are using, look at their safety data sheet and read through. You really need to study if it is something that's gonna be corrosive or harmful for you to use while you're working, then we wanna to try to avoid those. And go to barbicide.com. There's a lot of good educational resources for us on there. I should also mention too, when I am repackaging a lot of this stuff, I'm making a note and having the ingredients and everything still listed somewhere so that I have that to reference. I'm not just completely gonna be oblivious to what I have in here and what I have in there. Sorry, good thing she's fake. So I haven't done that in a store in a long time. Making me kind of sad, okay. Happier note, we are going to be stronger because of all of this and it may seem overwhelming, it may seem like a lot, but honestly, it's only overwhelming because we've been fed so much conflicting information over the years. Not only do we leave our own health vulnerable, we also are vulnerable to lawsuits and how many companies right now have been vultures preying on our industry, trying to take advantage of this weakness that we have. I'm so grateful for Barbicide for teaming up with me. Um, to be able to provide this information and fact check me so that we can be better as an industry. So we are actually going to be doing a Q&A. Um, I will be on it as well as Leslie, who's the director of education and she's a brilliant nurse. So leave your questions in the comment section so that we can address everything and make it a full conversation with our industry. I feel so much more empowered now that I have this understanding and I hope that you leave feeling the same way too. Remember to put your questions below and we will definitely get to them in our follow-up.